Welcome to Star Citizen, the Alpha 3.11 1 and the ship guide. Today we are dealing with the epitome of luxury and exclusivity, namely the Origin 890 Jump. As in every ship's guide, we first take a look at the exterior, then take an extended tour of the interior, look at the combat capabilities and what we can use the ship for. Finally, a test of the atmosphere flight characteristics. After the actual guide, we look at whether we can buy the 890 jump at all and where we can get it. In addition, my personal assessment of whether such a ship is even worthwhile. The 890 is a capital class ship, which means it is one of the biggest ships currently in the verse. It has a crew of 3 to 8 and is currently in the game flight ready. With a cargo capacity of 484 SU, she is also worthwhile for cargo trade but who flies cargo with a luxury yacht? The specifications are impressive, with a length of 210 meters, a width of 71 meters and height of 40 meters, the 890 jump is definitely an eye catcher. Currently you can buy this beautiful piece of high technology for about 32.2 million USC at New Deal in Lowell, Hurston. She is still one of the few ships that has only one version. And that means the 890 Jump is not available in different versions, but only in the one stylish and iconic shape. And as the flagship is luxury manufacturer Origin Jump Works, the 890 has all the luxury features you can imagine. Because of this, our tour inside will be a little more extended than usual. There's just too much to see here and we could extend this part for much longer. With every 890 you get an additional snub fighter, also from Origin Jump Works, the 85X, which is with almost a half a million not a bargain. Let's start with the first part of our test, the exterior. Because of the huge size of the 890 jump, we could make a video of the exterior and the details here. So I try to give you an impression of the size and proportions as much as possible and show the 890 from its best side. The ship is based on modern mega luxury yachts, which is where she get her unique look from. Typical for RG Jumpworks is the clear and stylish design language. The lines are harmonious and clear, and there are no attachments that would interfere with the outward appearance. Especially when the landing gear of the 890 is extended, the sheer size is clearly visible and you definitely get a good impression that you are standing in front of a capital ship. The color scheme is mainly white with grey accents and applications simply timeless. The components of the 890 Jump are all in capital size, the maximum size, and therefore currently not interchangeable. These are also, like for example the power plants, cooler and shield generators, always present and duplicate so that in the event of a failure the whole thing can still be compensated for. Only in the area of the radar is no capital size installed, but one of the level large, a size which also used on other ships. And within the computer capacity there are two size medium computers installed, but this is preliminary data. And the whole thing will certainly change for a ship of this size, especially with the implementation of the server blades. To enter the ship we take one of the two main elevators that we have in the stern area for people and middle area for vehicles of all categories. Here we see the white light rings that mark where we have to stand, essential for calling an elevator. Since the 890 appears confusing due its sheer size alone and especially the first time you can lose your orientation very quickly, let's take a look at what we see immediately after reaching the elevator. On the left side we come to the escape pods and at the same time to the airlock. These are the same on both sides, one on the left and right sides. We find these airlocks with the access to the escape pods. Just across from the elevator we enter the atrium through a glass door that opens automatically. And this is one of the most interesting parts of the ship and one of the wow moments we have here again and again. Here we have not only a huge glass ceiling and several sculptures and countless seating arrangements, but also two semi-circular staircases, as well as luxury rooms designed for passengers. 
and the expression room is definitely wrong. These are real luxury suits with private bedrooms and really all the amenities like an aquarium, a big screen and many details. In other words, everything or exquisite guest might need on their journey. Also, I would like to point out again that we do not look at areas which are mirrored from both sides, because we would see the same thing again. In the side rear areas there are escape pods and elevators for the staff and crew. Through the door at the back of the first level we enter the wellness area. This is definitely another highlight of the jump. A wellness area is not only unique, but this is really a design composition of the extra class. Chapeau CIG! Here we have a large pool, as well as a small whirlpool, several saunas and elevators connecting to other decks. There is also the possibility to change your clothes and just relax. And also here you could make a whole guide about the wellness area, but the video does not want to overstrain. We get further over the ledge on the stairs into the second level. And here in the rear area are again two luxury suits, as in the first level. Following the corridor we reach the area where we can enjoy ourselves and have a good drink. Here the next highlight is waiting for us. The bar area. This is equipped with a full bar, which is not really usable yet, with a beautiful panoramic view over the ship, planets or space, as well as many seats. A single 890 jump definitely had enough space to luxuriously accommodate a serve L50 players of server. In the back area we find the onboard restaurant and finally the conference room. Here we also have a fantastic view outside, over the ship and the cold vacuum which seems so far away from here. From the bar next to the main entrance door on the left, a small black door leads into an area for the crew and staff, where we also find an elevator. However, we look into the third and top level of the atrium, the captain's bridge. And yes, there is a second type of bridge. The main bridge looks very clean and tidy. Here the lines are even clearer and more functional and we actually don't find anything that could block the view. At crew seats on the bridge, we have three seats, that is the captain's seat and two co-pilots. Here we have access to several ship systems, such as MFDs and remote towers. The bridge on the top level, the level 3 of the atrium, definitely has a very good and elevated position above the ship and the all-around view is really really good here as well. The dimensions and measurements of the huge 890 can be easily estimated and visually maneuverability is definitely given. The pilot seat moves down, picks up the captain or pilot and moves out again a little further. However, flight and combat is a later part of this guide. Through the co-pilot seats we have several options, including several remote towers, two above and two below the ship, which we can control from here. The overall visibility of the remote turrets is very good. And as we can see here, we can fire at our own ship. Here we are simply diverted a bit. So we get to the last area in the top level, the captain's quarters. And here again there is currently no other ship or facility that offers more exclusivity and a better view from a cabin. Especially during the flight we have a wonderful view of the massive engines and the passing space in the rear view. The captain's cabin has not only a bed, but also a dining room, a fully equipped luxury bathroom and other amenities. Only the view from the bed is better on the Origin 600i. The large screen in front of the bed looks a bit antiquated here. However, in this area alone we already have everything we need with a small kitchen or even a small conference room. Through the black door on the side next to the window, which opens automatically, we get back to the outside area. However, we don't look at the luxury area anymore, but go towards the crew quarters, where they work. The elevator takes us either to the crew deck or to the engineer deck.
And as we can see here, we have an impressive view of the A90s systems and engines. It's definitely worth a visit. Here we get into the vehicle hangar. And here we can really get every vehicle currently available in the game. And the elevator is definitely a very massive variant. Here we also have to mention that this elevator has its own safety function, so that no atmosphere can enter when we move it up or down. We have a lot of space in the freight elevator to reach the surface with vehicles or several people at the same time. We can use the stairs on the left and when we reach the top of the stairs, the first door on the left then leads also in the crew area. Here we have the weapon compartments which are sufficient to supply a whole army. All other areas follow a long tube-like corridor. Besides an elevator, which also leads back to the upper areas, we come to another highlight. A fully equipped med bay. This offers you the possibility to set a spawn point on the 890, just like the Karagor currently a Cutlass Red. However, this feature will remain in later game versions, unlike the Cutlass where the spawn mechanic will be removed at some point. At the end of the ship we get into the hangar, where we can park snub fighters or ships in the size of an Origin 300i and similar ones. For example, we can park all three versions of the new 100 series in this hangar at once. In the bow area, at the front of the ship, we have one of the man turrets, which is facing down. All in all, the 890 jump is armed with turrets only, of which there are two mana turrets like this one, which are equipped with laser cannons. According to the technical data, these are size 4, and the other two remote turrets are each size 3. And this refers to the armament and not the turret size. There are also four remote turrets disturbed around the ship, but they are all equipped with rockets. The same ones that we've seen on the bridge. And this brings us to four towers that are equipped with normal weapons and four towers that can fire rockets or missiles. And one more information for all those who want to fly the 890 alone. There are no pilot armed weapons and we really have to get out of the pilot seat to control a gun turret. The equipment of the crew quarters is rather functional and less luxurious, but compared to other manufacturers, a clear plus. It doesn't look like the cleaning lady has to wipe the floor wet first. Directly connected to the crew quarters is a small launch and if we follow the corridor further back, we come to the kitchen which also has a direct elevator to the top and a small cold room. If we follow our way further, we automatically come to the second aft area. Here we have again escape pods for the crew and access to the secondary bridge. Here we have for example a control possibility for a pilot who has no direct view outside but can fly the ship. From the two of them sitting here, we can again control remote gun turrets. And another small tip, if you really want to fly a 890 alone, this place is not so nice concerning the view, but it's very effective. Since you can control the ship here and only have to get up to get to the remote turret to be able to shoot back. And that's it with the interior, so we can take off and have a look at what kind of combat capabilities a capital ship, which is actually a luxury yacht in this goose, has to offer. But before we get to the fight, let's get one thing straight. The 890 Jump is a luxury liner, which means that the armament is not designed for direct combat and is therefore inferior to other ships of this size and especially in comparison to other capital ships much weaker. However, the 890's defensive capabilities are a house number and their own. With normal weapons it is almost impossible to bring the 890's shields down and even with distortion weapons we really have to fire at the shield with combined forces so that at some point they lose power or even fail. 
Especially in the current PvE area, there is nothing at all that could be dangerous for an 890 jump. The only annoying thing in PvE, if you really need to be alone, is the effort to climb into a turret, which is of course a lot of. Here at the bottom we see this for example, finding a suitable target is a test of patience and is definitely not fun. So for everything that has to do with an 890 and combat, I strongly recommend you to take at least one or two shooters with you, then the whole thing is not only fun, but everybody has something to do. You save yourself a long ways from the pilot seas to a man turret. But with an 890 jump, you can also go for a coffee, have lunch or maybe an afternoon walk with the dog, standing AFK in an asteroid field where you will be permanently shot at. Only the size 10 cannons and turrets which are currently located around stations can become a danger for the 890. And concerning the main turrets, they are indicated with two size 4, depending on the source we use, but I think they are definitely size 5 guns. As far as the combat capabilities are concerned, the 890 jump can take a lot of punishment and with the right crew, it can give out a lot. But you can't compare it to a javelin or other capital ships, which are more military and designed for combat. Therefore, the 890 is able to resist and survive any battle, but is not built for that, and there are many other ships that promise much more fun in this area. And if you be toying with the idea of flying the 890 all by yourself? No. And as far as usability is concerned, of course, the 890 with a cargo capacity of 484 SEU definitely has a capacity to fly cargo. But compared to other ships with such a capacity, it is very slow and especially the takeoff and landing process on planets is very tedious. So I would call that limited. And the same is true for delivery missions. Of course, you can probably do all the delivery missions in the verse at once with an 890, but it will take even longer. So let's get to the last part. The atmospheric flight characteristics. As in every test, we look if we can steer the ship in the atmosphere as close and tight through the cliffs and curves of a moon or planet as possible. And honestly, I was surprised how well and agile a ship of this size can be steered. Here the yacht performs better than expected and was even really fun. The enormous thrust of the 890 also allows for maneuvers that are abrupt and with the thrust forward you can navigate relatively unerringly and well. But tight turns or stops are of course not possible. As far as flight characteristics are concerned, I would give the 890 a rather good report card. So our guide has reached the end and we're looking where we can get the 890 at all. At Starhanger we get the 890 jump of course just like at the grey market, for about $1000 to $1250 we get it here with lifetime insurance or 10 years insurance. And unfortunately, this is one of the main ways we can get the 890 at all. In the Pledge Store, it is only available through really expensive packages like the Praetorium package, here for about $60,000 or Euro. Otherwise, it is only available for limited special sales or events, but there is also a very limited amount available, which is usually sold out after a few seconds or minutes. I hope you enjoyed the video and leave me a like and a subscribe. The Origin 890 Jump is in a class of its own. It not only combines design and grace with the size of a capital ship, it is also relatively easy to steer for such a colossus and also offers a lot of amenities. You won't find more luxury anywhere else. So if you're looking for luxury, you'll have to go to the manufacturer Origin and here's the absolute flagship, the 890 Jump. However, the price have to quote here is over $1,000, which is 
real announcement and again this is a ship for a game that is in development and it is not foreseeable if it will ever be released but still it's an 890 jump that means if you want to afford one maybe you'll think about spending the 32 million uec in game flying a 890 is a special event and especially if you're on the road with more than one player you'll have all the options regarding crew gameplay Currently there is of course another giveaway, a Tavern War uniform in white and a PC game, Cyberpunk 2077, which by the way has been postponed. I hope you enjoyed the video and I want to thank you again. To all Patreons and channel members, without your support I would never have this motivation to offer you something and I say thank you very much. You guys rock! I say goodbye and as always I hope to see you again. So, see you in the verse.